on. You gotta see this. Times that I've seen you lose your way, you're not in control, and you won't be told. All I can do to keep you safe is hold you close, hold you close till you can breathe on your own. used to these tricks being filmmakers. Please welcome the chair of the Grierson Trust, Lorraine Hegesy. What an amazing montage of an amazing group of films. Um, I'm so thrilled to welcome you here tonight to the 51st British Documentary Awards. As... <laughs> so we're here to celebrate the brilliance of the documentary form and the talent of the teams that brings them to our screens, to celebrate all of you. Um, I'm so glad you've joined the Grayson Trust tonight to honour the incredible craftsmanship showcased in such a wide range of compelling stories. At a time when budgets are tight and many in our industry are struggling, it's more important than ever to celebrate and highlight the pivotal role that the documentary plays in every schedule and on every platform, making breathtaking revelations and shedding new light on subjects we thought we knew. Now, the competition was particularly fierce this year with a record number of entries jostling for position on the shortlists. So real congratulations to all those whose films are nominated tonight. 
you have made the best documentaries of the past year. I'd like to thank this year's category chairs, reviewers and jurors who committed their valuable time to watch and debate the merits of all the entries and to decide on the shortlists and nominations. Alongside the genre-based categories, which are decided by juries, the Grayson's trustees make two special awards. We have the Grayson Hero of the Year Award, which recognizes the achievements of people who are working behind the scenes who've created positive change. And there's no doubt that this year's winners, deaf and disabled people in TV, have done just that. The trustees were hugely impressed with the impact that the team running this small organization has made, supporting the careers of deaf, deaf disabled, and neurodivergent off-screen talent. And they do it in addition to doing their day jobs. This year's Grierson Trustees Award for an outstanding contribution to the art and craft of documentary goes to the incredibly talented Anna Hall. <laughs> Anna's a true beacon of light in our industry, upholding the highest standards of integrity in her films and in the way that she runs her Yorkshire-based production company. These Grierson Awards would simply not be possible without the generous support of our sponsors, in particular, our loyal headline sponsor, All3 Media. Huge thanks to all of you. We're incredibly grateful for your continued backing, which enables us to put on these awards and to run the trust year round. So let's have a round of applause for all our sponsors. I'm so proud that our role in helping underrepresented talent to enter or progress in the documentary industry has expanded hugely in the past few years through our Grierson Doc Lab training schemes under the wonderful leadership of Yen Yao. The Doc Lab core program for new entrants is generously supported by the Rank Foundation along with several independent production companies that provide valuable work placements for our trainees and many individuals who act as mentors. Please look out for our current Doc Lab core trainees at the party afterwards. They're all wearing silver badges, so you can easily spot them. And I advise you to snap them up before somebody else does. Our thanks also go to Netflix for supporting two specialist training programs, Grierson and Doc Lab in Focus. We have one on production management, and the other is the newly focused unscripted, unscripted editing program, which seeks to upskill editors to work on large-scale, complex factual productions. And we're thrilled to be launching a new pilot training program to develop archive producers. This is in collaboration with Prime Video Pathways, and it's a fantastic opportunity for freelancers already working in our industry to improve their skills in this area or to retrain for a role that will give them additional career opportunities, especially during this challenging time when so many are out of work. All the details are on our website, so if you're interested in applying, please have a look there. What you see tonight is just a small part of the amazing work carried out by our tiny Grierson team of staff, Sylvia, Hannah, Yen, Tanya, and Finley. That really is all our staff. Their capacity to cope with an ever-expanding workload and their unfailing good humor makes them a delight to work with, so thank you. And well done to our new MD, Sylvia Bednarts, who took over seamlessly from Jane Callahan last year and who's approached the role with energy and passion. Well done, Sylvia. <laughs> Thanks also to my fabulous fellow trustees, who give their time, expertise, and valuable advice to guide the Grierson Trust. I am so lucky to be surrounded by such a brilliant group of people. Before we move on with tonight's proceedings, I just want to take a moment to honor a formidable force in the documentary industry who we tragically lost this year, Jess Search. 
Jess encouraged filmmakers to tell important stories that might change the world. She fought tirelessly for the truth, and her legacy will live on through the important work of the Doc Society and the many filmmakers she inspired. So tonight, let's celebrate the change makers and truth tellers in our industry. Thank you. Thank you again for joining us this evening. I look forward to raising a glass or maybe two with you later. But for now, please join me in welcoming tonight's brilliant host, the one and only Nish Kumar. Hello, everybody. It's an honor to be here hosting the Grierson Awards and celebrating the best in documentaries from Britain and around the world. Uh, my name... Uh, and you're already shit-faced. My name is Nish Kumar, uh, and I am a uh, British-Asian political comedian. What a time to be a British-Asian in Britain right now. I have never felt more represented in politics than whenever I see Rishi Sunak. Because whenever I see Rishi Sunak, I see an under-talented, over-promoted British Indian man struggling to connect with the British public. And I think at last, I can see myself in our Prime Minister. For too long, it's been the mediocre whites. Now... <laughs> It's the turn of the mediocre Asians, and it's not just Sunak. <laughs> Pretty Patel was Home Secretary for a while and proposed an immigration bill that would have resulted in her own parents being unable to come to this country. I have Indian parents. They can be quite irritating. <laughs> but I've never thought, I wish I could go back in time and deport these people. <laughs> and then, of course, we're faced with Suella Braverman, a woman so profoundly unpleasant her given name is Sue Ellen, and she changed it to sound more like a fictional dog murderer. <laughs> what I'm saying is, as a British Indian right now, I feel that I have to enter rooms immediately apologising. Sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm constantly apologising. Basically, I'm behaving in the way white people should have been behaving for the last thousand years. <laughs> but no. You lot all walked into rooms for a thousand years with your heads held high, perfect posture, walking around going, yep, another day of doing things people will always think were cool. <laughs> all of which uh, is to say, uh, I don't get invited to do a lot of these things. <laughs> I am a spicy booking. Um, to give you an idea of uh, what my general vibe was like, uh, about six months ago I was walking through the centre of London on Oxford Street and I was shouting on the phone to my brother that the Conservative Party was a disease that the British public needed to be cured of immediately. Later, I returned home and received a tweet from someone that said, I saw Nish Kumar on Oxford Street today. It turns out it's not a character. <laughs> No, it's not a character. Uh, this is what I'm like all the time. I basically, my whole life is this, and sometimes there's an audience and a microphone. Uh, but what I would say is, uh, when they asked me to host these awards, uh, I said, you know about my vibe. They said, we know about your vibe. Uh, but this is an audience filled with people who make and watch documentaries. And as such, it is the absolute textbook group of guardian-munching leftist malcontents. <laughs> So you'll almost certainly uh, be fine. Um, <laughs> I'm genuinely uh, so proud to be here, I think, at a time uh, of global instability, a war and a uh, political class that seems hostile towards the scientific consensus on man-made climate change. Uh, what you do now is more important than ever, celebrating the human experience, building empathy and asserting the primacy of facts over rhetoric. I think it's an incredibly important thing <laughs> that you're doing right now. You may well applaud yourselves, you arrogant pricks. <laughs> As I say, spicy booking. 
uh, just before we get cracking, I do also just want to slightly address this slightly alarming strapping on my hand. Uh, I have uh, broken my finger. Uh, the way that I broke, don't ah uh, until you've heard how I did it. The way I broke my finger was I sat on my hand whilst playing five-a-side football. So. <laughs> Uh, I was in goal, uh, and my friend was bearing down on goal. He was going to shoot this way, and then he cut across the ball at the last minute and went the other way. Uh, I managed to divert my body weight very quickly, uh, and I saved the shot. I want that noted. Uh, but unfortunately, uh, I sat on my hand uh, and broke my finger and injured my neck. Uh, I didn't realise uh, I'd broken uh, my finger. I knew that I'd hurt my neck. Unfortunately, uh, a week later, I was sent to A&E by a concerned medical professional, uh, and uh, they tried to reset my finger. Uh, I refused pain medication. I don't know if you've ever tried to style out fainting, but <laughs> you cannot do it. I passed out uh, in A&E, and when I was brought back to consciousness, I said, can I help you, uh, as if I... <laughs> had had my day ruined by the doctor. Um, and I know that given what I've said, it's quite off-brand for me to say that I uh, hurt my neck and hand uh, by playing football. Uh, that's not what people expect based on my general public persona. If I've hurt my neck, you want it to be because I was nodding too vigorously at a Naomi Klein op-ed piece. And you want me to have hurt my hand because I banged it too vigorously when I remembered about the bloody Tories. Uh, but I just want to remind you before we go any further that whilst it may on the surface seem off-brand, ultimately a summary of events is that I injured myself by turning too enthusiastically to the left. So ultimately... <laughs> the injury is consistent with the brand. So, uh, let's get on with the show. Uh, the first award of the night is the best science documentary sponsored by the Open University. Let's have a look at the nominations. A Trip to Infinity asks, what is the infinite? And explores its mind-bending implications for the universe. Even very small children can have a gut feeling about infinity. It's the biggest possible thing. It's bigger than anything you can ever think of. Well, what happens if you add one? When she was diagnosed with terminal cancer, Tony Cruz donated her body to science. Narrated in her own words, My Dead Body follows the team researching how her disease spread. I've applied to donate my body. I'd love for people to learn from my illness. Tony is going to be the first person to be publicly dissected in the UK. I've never done a dissection like Tony's before, and so I am excited that we're going to be a start on this journey. I'm trying not to think about it too much, because I think if you actually kind of think and analyse what they're going to do, is is a bit of a mind game as a mum. In Disability and Abortion, The Hardest Choice, Ruth Maidley and Rubin Reuter tackle the challenging subject of terminating pregnancies for conditions such as spina bifida and Down syndrome. If you had known, would you abort me? No. I'd lost two babies in a miscarriage and I thought, if this baby's digging in, then we're going to, you know, this, this is the baby for us. What do you think, Dad? Uh, well, it's a tricky one, isn't it? Because you're a different person then to the person you are now, aren't you? So... Yeah. The person I was then uh, would have certainly given them pause for thought. <sighs> well, thank heavens, we didn't know before. <laughs> Chris Packham and a team of creatives help four young autistic people make short films to reveal their unique worldview in Inside Our Autistic Minds. I live in a total blur of information. If I have too many people in a room at one time and one place, it is too overwhelming for me to have to process. I have to jiggle my brain to make it settle. It's just how I cope. Uh, 
And to present the award, please welcome one of our most distinguished journalists and former Channel 4 News broadcaster, Jon Snow! <laughs> Dare I put it there? Let's hope. <laughs> this beautiful and innovative documentary was described by the jury as totally entrancing and enriching, with real potent potential to, well, change lives. Uh, jurors felt that the uh, documentary was explaining areas where others had not yet gone. The Grierson Award for Best Science Documentary goes to Inside Our Autistic Minds. Inside Our Autistic Minds. Fantastic. Please, welcome to the stage. Wow, what a work, what a piece of work, and what a way in which television has done something which is groundbreaking. It's been a tool that has been in your hands and given us, the plain Joes of public life, an insight into the way we are. I'm absolutely amazing, absolutely amazing. So the winners are on stage, audio drops, Oh, these are my instructions, but not my words. <laughs> now, here you see, here you see is a serious malfunction. <laughs> this is a malfunction of the brain, which has failed to see that yellow words on the auto cue are merely, merely instructions to tell us what's actually happening. But, but no. Oh, really? Flo, yeah. how wonderful. Yeah. Yes, please, welcome on stage the film's series producer and director, Joe Myerskov, with members <laughs> of the production team. And I'm going to give it to you. And there we go. Can I give Hello, uh, my name is Flo. I'm one of the autistic contributors to Inside Our Autistic Minds. <laughs> So, what I'm about to say is improvised, um, so if you're not amenable, um, you're ableist. Um, <laughs> I'd like to share with you a little story about uh, some of the behind the scenes from, from filming Inside Our Artistic Minds. Uh, Chris Packham and I uh, got a little bit distracted while we were filming early on and ended up in a bush sniffing to try and find what a curious smell was <laughs> coming out of the bush. And I said, it smells exactly like you thyme old toothpaste which you will have only have heard of if you're a Victorian child. <laughs> it's bright pink and it smells like clothes, and he uh, lamented a childhood of having your thymol and missing it dearly. So when we wrapped filming, we'd had an, emo an emotional moment with my mum, who we've now found out is also autistic, like me. Um, I, <laughs> yeah. I, um, I got to gift Chris a tube of uh, your thymol toothpaste, which he immediately uncapped and ate. <laughs> I consider that the uh, supreme autistic bonding moment. Um, and um, I know you're not supposed to say thank you at this, at this point, but I was so well taken care of. This team are amazing. Um, the duty of care was above and beyond. And I want to say that it is totally achievable for you to do that as a team. I felt so well looked after, so thank you and thank you for watching. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, Jon Snow. They spared no expense with the individual award presenters. They did save money on the host. Next up, 
We have the award for best natural history or environmental documentaries. Let's see the nominated films. Big Oil versus the World reveals how oil companies fueled climate change denial, despite warnings from their own scientists of the risks carbon emissions posed to the planet. They realize that it was going to be an existential threat to their business, but they made a, a deeply unethical decision. The scientific evidence remains inconclusive. They lied. Deep in the forests of Uganda, Chimp Empire embeds with the largest group of chimpanzees ever recorded to better understand their behavior and social interactions. Grooming is an important part of life for all chimpanzees. It's how they create and maintain social relationships. It's the chimp equivalent of conversation. It's highly political planning, persuading, plotting. A chronicle of the life and work of intrepid volcano explorers Katia and Maurice Kraft, Fire of Love is an insight into a truly explosive relationship. It's very hard to live together because it's very volcanic, so it's a lot of eruptions very often. <rire> bah, L'autre jour, justement, il se précipite sur un cône qui était actif. Et bon, alors, il, est en train, ouais. il était en train de se refroidir, donc à ce moment-là, il y a des fissures qui se forment dans ce petit cône. Ce n'est pas très grand. Hein. Puis qu'est-ce qu'il a fait Il est tombé dans un trou. Et il elle m'a fait... poussé dedans The Elephant Whisperers documents an extraordinary family from southern India who devote their lives to caring for an orphaned baby elephant named Ragu. And to present the award, please welcome mathematician and presenter, Hannah Fry. Thank you very much. Good evening, everybody. Um, I had the pleasure of being a juror for this category, an uh, exceptionally strong category. Um, and also, I think it's, it's worth adding that it takes quite a lot of courage uh, not to nominate Sir David Attenborough um, for this particular category. <laughs> so fair play to the Grissons. Um, <laughs> But just, just know that he is coming for you. Um, now, <laughs> the jury commended the winning film for its bravery and journalism, for its amazing access, for its meticulous research, basically the opposite of GB News. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the documentary's approach and execution on such a pertinent topic left us all feeling very inspired. The Grierson Award for the best natural history or environmental documentary goes to Big Oil versus the World. <laughs> Please welcome on stage producer Emma Supple and editor Ella Newton. Um, we weren't expecting to win, so I haven't, I haven't um, prepared to say anything. Um, first of all, I want to say thank you um, to the other um, directors and the other people working on, um, on the series, in particular Robin Barnwell and Gesh Mohammed, and to Dan Edge, who's our series producer, and it was his idea to make this. Um, he actually texted us earlier and said, make sure you keep your speech short and funny, which I thought was a bit unfair given it's climate change and climate <laughs> crisis. Um, yeah. we, we spent, the, the three of us, but particularly me and Emma, spent um, nearly a year traveling across the US and talking to a lot of people who had been involved in fighting climate change really for 40 years, or more than 40 years. 
And even though they had faced so many setbacks and they had you know, experienced from the oil industry this disinformation campaign that's really aggressive and really well funded, most of them remain positive that we can tackle climate change before it becomes catastrophic. Some might say it's already catastrophic, but before it becomes really, really bad. Um, so, yeah, I want to say that let's do it, and um, they've left us with, with hope. So it is possible for us to fix this, and it's amazing for, that the Grierson's have um, uh, recognised not the programme but the subject. Um, so thank you very much. It's only when you hear speeches like that you realise what a waste of fucking time your job is. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we've got some of the best documentaries seen in the cinema in the last year. And this award is sponsored by Red Bull Studios. So let's see the nominated films. Oh, I don't think I should risk it. It's so much easier if I could ride the horse. A Bunch of Amateurs introduces the Bradford Movie Makers, a film club with a long history and a membership keen to tackle some of the cinematic greats. What we thought we'd do is get this shot of it, you know, you leading it. And then, if you wouldn't mind putting my shirt on and hat to do a long shot of you on the horse. Yeah. All That Breathes intimately observes a family-run sanctuary for birds of prey in New Delhi that boasts a unique connection with the city's population of black kites. Well, that's good, but... A comic strip artist brings to life a key event from his youth. Eternal Spring tells the story of how a group of activists hijacked the Chinese state TV signal and the ensuing crackdown. Nothing Compares reflects on the early life and talents of Sinead O'Connor. In between takes, Sinead would click on some really heavy duty dub reggae and light up a spliff and be bopping around the studio. We weren't in a kind of particularly sombre mood. Looking into my monitor, looking down that lens, I saw right there this connection coming down the camera. It was like, oh, OK, this is really something else. It's not my direction. It's not the cinematography. It's entirely her. And to announce the recipient, please welcome from Red Bull Studios, Dominique Cutts. And with her, it's Olympic and world champion athlete, Sir Mo Farah. The jury were completely immersed in the winning film. It played out like a drama. The cinematography, artistic vision and sound design shone in this film and the viewer was totally transported. So Mo, please tell us who the award goes to. The Grace Award for the Best Cinema Documentary, sponsored by Red Bull Studio, goes to All That Breathes. Welcome on stage the film's producer, Flory Priest, with members of the production team. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> Thank you so much for this award. Um, it's such a great honor to be accepting this on behalf of the whole All That Breathes team. Uh, I'm so sorry that uh, our director, Sean Aksen, um, and our producers, Teddy Luther and Aman Man, are not here to accept the, the award, but I'm sure they'll be absolutely thrilled to hear this news. Um, it's been such an incredible journey with this film, and I have to say a huge, huge thank you to everyone who's been there along the way and made this happen for us, uh, including our partners at Tangle Bank Studios, um, Sideshow, Submarine Deluxe, um, HBO and Sky Documentaries. Thank you. <laughs> we will, uh, if you go the wrong way, physically chase you back into the right direction. <laughs> we have no compunctions about doing that. Several of our staff are armed with cattle prods. Anyway. Let's look back in time with the best history documentary. Here are the nominations. Constructed entirely from archive footage, The Princess chronicles the very public life and death of Diana, Princess of Wales. You look through there. You see, you can see things going on inside it. Look. You see the faces. The people in there. Look at them. <laughs> Trapped. Uncovering a long-buried family story, Nellie and Nadine pays homage to a grandmother who worked for the French Resistance, then fell in love with a woman whilst in a concentration camp. Je monte à ton lit du troisième étage. Tu y es heureusement seul. Ce qui est rare dans ce camp. Mi couché, mi accoudé, nous parlons. Moi, de mon enfance, du jardin de ma grand-mère, de musique, de mes concerts. Toi, de la Chine, du grand hôtel de Pékin et de ses fastes. Ou de ta vie chez Nathalie Barnet, dans son salon de la rue Jacob. Revisiting 30 years of sectarian violence, once upon a time in Northern Ireland, exposes the human cost of the Troubles. My aunt came and got me from the airport, and we were coming up Candy Way up on the Andy Town Road, and it was a bus burning. And I says, what's the bus burning for? And she said, Joe McDonald's dead. So that's how I found out my daddy was dead. Murder in the Pacific investigates the bombing of the Greenpeace ship Rainbow Warrior after its crew went to assist Pacific Islanders harmed by years of nuclear testing. It affected us all, I think, to see what had happened to these people. It wasn't so much as a political event as just helping a group of people out. It was really one of the best things I ever did in Greenpeace, for sure. To announce this year's recipient, please welcome historian, writer, and broadcaster, David Olashoga. Good evening. The exceptional access and gripping testimonies in the winning film had the jurors hooked from the very start. And they praised the documentary for its humanity, its warmth, and commended the filmmakers for creating a powerful and important historical record. The Grierson Award for Best History Documentary goes to the incredible Once Upon a Time in Northern Ireland. Please.
please welcome to the stage series director James Brumel and members of the production team. Thank you so much. Uh, I, li I like, you know, that we had a great commissioning team on this. It's very special and um, for the BBC. And I think, um, and, and, and you know, the, the contributors that sat in that chair and shared those stories, I, I, you know, I can't thank them enough. It was very brave of them to do that. And I suppose it's not often we look at Northern Ireland as a, or well, not traditional really, we look at Northern Ireland as a place for hope. But seeing how far things have come since the Good Friday Agreement, I think it shows that hope can survive even the sort of darkest of, uh, of circumstances, and that's something to be celebrated. Thank you. Incredible stuff. Now we come to a very hard-hitting category, Best Current Affairs Documentary, which is sponsored by Televisual. And here are the four films in the running for the award. Children of the Taliban views Afghanistan through the eyes of four young people growing up as their country changes dramatically. The Crossing forensically investigates one deadly day on the English Channel in November 2021. <laughs> Inside Russia, Putin's war at home details the reality of life for Russians who won't stay silent about the war in Ukraine. I'm one of the few people inside of Russia who have been documenting what's been happening since the beginning of the so-called special military operation because I felt like no one was speaking at all. We recently have been banned from TikTok and now we can only see content that has been created inside of Russia. We can't post any more content. So, you know, it's full on censorship and propaganda. Retrograde follows an Afghan general as the US military withdraws support from his troops. Our country is everything we have. And since the US left, I can see the sense of abandonment within the Afghan forces. To present the award, please welcome James Bennett from Televisual, along with journalist and newsreader, Lucrezia Millerini. Good evening, everyone. It's amazing to be here to celebrate some truly remarkable filmmaking, and in particular, this category, some brave filmmaking as well. Now, the winning film was beautifully shot, with the jury appreciating its meticulous attention to detail, thoughtful consideration, and impeccable casting choices. The jury members unanimously considered this film a masterpiece. James, who's got the award? 
The Grierson Award for Best Current Affairs Documentary, sponsored by Televisual, goes to Retrograde. Please welcome on stage the producer, Caitlin McNally. On behalf of our director, Matthew Heinemann, and our amazing, amazing team who made this film, thank you to the Grierson Trust for this recognition. It's an honor to be in this room with all of these peers and incredible nominees. With Retrograde, we had the opportunity to capture the end of America's longest war from multiple perspectives. And for that, we are forever grateful. To the Green Berets, the Afghan military personnel, and the civilians who allowed us to tell their stories. Thank you from the bottom of our hearts. And to our steadfast partners at National Geographic, thank you so much for standing by us on a very long journey. There are thousands of Afghan partners who fought and died beside US and NATO troops over the course of the 20-year war. Many are still stuck in Afghanistan to this day under great threat from the Taliban regime. If you feel so moved, please reach out for ways to support these partners and families who gave everything for our efforts in their country. Thank you so much. Time now for something a bit different. It's the best arts documentary. So let's have a reminder of the four films that made the final nominations. Don't throw water balloons at the uh, at my crew. Senior is a documentary about Robert Downey Jr.'s dad, who, as an art house filmmaker, just cannot resist the director's chair. Well, I like that that's his kid, and here's his daughter. Good shot. Great movement. Nobody's sitting. Hey, have you seen any of Grandpa's movies? No, why? Because they're awesome. Do you want to see them someday? Uh, maybe. Just a maybe. Dude, if you're going to throw a water balloon, hit me with it. <laughs> Becoming Frida Kahlo examines the body of work of a groundbreaking artist and reveals the many facets of her complex personal life. If Diego Rivera crosses a line, it's with her sister, right? Nothing hurts her more than that. And if she crosses a line in return, it is sleeping with his political mentor. This is sort of a wonderful leverage in it. One hundred years after publication, James Joyce's Ulysses is deconstructed by well-known critics with some novel ideas for exploring the text. Don't read Ulysses. Just be with Ulysses. Live with it and just splash about for a while. I think you're allowed to do a little bit of skipping here and there. I think you're allowed not always to know what it means. Is that black enough for you? is the history of the evolution of black cinema as told by stars of stage and screen. I mean, I grew up in segregation. So from the time I could talk, walk, see, make sense of things, the world was separate. But when I went to the movies, the movies is the stuff of fantasies, you know? When I went to the movies, I came home and I wanted to be that pirate that I saw. But I needed a black cowboy.
to tell us about this year's recipient, please welcome actor and I dare say national treasure, Rose Ailing Ellis. The award goes to an entertaining and an original film. It was an artistic journey about the creative process. The journey described this documentary as centric, touching and emotional. The film stayed with them long after watching. The Grey Yeston Award for the best art documentary goes to Stinia. <laughs> The filmmaker, the filmmaker are not able to be here tonight, but the director, Chris Smith, has sent us a message. Thank you so much for the award for our film, Senior. Uh, on behalf of the small filmmaking team, which included Kevin and Emily Ford and Robert and Susan Downey, we're incredibly grateful for the honor. Um, I'm just grateful that people that might not have known who Robert Downey Sr. was were able to learn a little bit about him and his films. Um, they definitely had a huge impact on me and my filmmaking. Um, he continually would challenge us about everything, <laughs> um, but in particular, the making of this film. So I would say there, you know, this, this award wouldn't be complete without acknowledging Senior and his contribution. So thanks so much. Listen, you all make very serious films, but we all heard the audible intake of breath when you thought you were going to see Iron Man for a second. <laughs> we all heard it. Next up, we'll crown the best student documentary, which is supported by our headline sponsor, All Three Media. So let's take a look at the nominations. With Woman Follows Star, a black midwife defying state laws to help women give birth safely at home. The risk of possibly getting a felony is something that I think about every time I leave out of my door. And so a lot of times I'm just praying for a good outcome, but I'm really asking for the protection of God. Reconnecting from afar, Dear Daughter meditates on a strained mother-daughter relationship. In Two Copper Wires, a filmmaker calls every phone box in Britain in search of a good connection. How are you doing? I'm all right. Trying to get there, getting there. Yeah? What kind of Struggling. thing? Struggling. Struggling. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Why? Oh, uh, because I'm uh, homeless. I can't get the hospital because you know, because I'm not British yet, so they just make me wait longer than usual it should take. Talila Alulabai documents a teenage Palestinian girl growing in confidence and clashing with her mother's expectations. <laughs> To announce the winning film, please welcome filmmaker and presenter Louis Theroux. How about a hand for our host, Nish Kumar? Doing an amazing job. I was also available uh, to present. 
but uh, maybe next year. The winning film was described by the jury as a masterclass in access, a perfect blend of beauty and rawness. It was confident in its artistry and style. The jury connected with its distinct sense of urgency and purpose. The Grierson Award for the All Three Media Best Student Documentary goes to With Woman. Please welcome on stage director, producer, and cinematographer Mia Harvey and members of the production team. so much for this award and we are just so happy to be in this room as student filmmakers. It's just honestly such a pleasure. Um, I want to start off by thanking Star and Raven. Um, following your journey, their journeys and being part of their story was just incredible and such a privilege. Um, we made this film kind of when women's rights are being attacked and black maternal mortality rates are disproportionate and we always wanted to make a film about strength and choice and we're just so happy that we were able to do this and I'm just so thankful to my team. This film is what it is because of all of your individual talents. Um, yeah, thank you so much to the NFTS, The Guardian and also um, uh, The Grierson's. I'm just sorry, I'm just so nervous but thank you so much everyone, thank you. I can't believe you guys could have been watching Louis Theroux. You guys really fucked up with the booking. <laughs> uh, listen, I, I, I do what I can with what I'm given. Alongside celebrating accomplished documentary talent with these awards, the Grierson Trust's year-round work focuses on developing new talent and helping to bring people from underrepresented groups into the documentary industry. Over the last 11 years, Grierson Doc Lab has grown. And now, with four annual training programs, and over 160 trainees, DocLab has been a springboard for dynamic new voices in documentary. So, let's take a look at what some of this year's trainees got up to. The Grissom DocLab is a training programme for young people aged 18 to 25 from across the UK. DocLab targets people who are very interested in working in documentary and factual TV, but they don't necessarily have the networks or connections to be able to do that. We have industry professionals providing their support through mentoring. Um, they come in to provide uh, talks, masterclasses online, and it's also in person when we meet in our residential so that they can demystify and break down all different types of subjects. We had different producers come in. We had commissioning editors from the BBC. We had independent production companies, post-production companies. We did lots of film theory and terminology. It was, it was kind of like an intensive, all things actual course. The highlight of Dot Club so far has probably been meeting lots of other people who are really excited about getting into the industry. I always knew that I wanted to work in factual and documentaries. It's just quite a hard industry to get into if you don't have the right connections. It's definitely a place where you'll be nurtured and you will be supported. And in the digital age where the media landscape is changing, I feel like documentaries and factual TV will always have a place there, which makes me happy because obviously I love documentaries. When you're at this early stage in your career, to have such high up contacts and these opportunities is just amazing. You feel like you're going to be ready to step into the industry. We take all of the trainees to Sheffield Dockfest, where we really just want to introduce them to the industry and try and introduce them to as many people who are potential future collaborators as possible. We then match the trainees with industry partners. 
They'll have at least four weeks within a production company working on a specific production where they'll have that first stage experience and that's supported by a workplace bursary. I'm currently placed at um, Wanderhood Studios. I've been placed predominantly on the casting team. I've also had the opportunity to work on a setup day for shoots for master interviews. It's an incredible opportunity and space for me to really get involved from the beginning of a production right through to actually production and shooting. I think the really unique thing about the Grizz and Doc Lab trainees are that they're really passionate about documentary and they have this amazing training before they come to your placement, which Grierson do incredibly well. Grierson and Doc Lab is really important for the TV industry because it's very difficult when you're entry level. It's very competitive. This gives just such a good foundation for people coming into the industry. Give it up for the Grace and Dop Lab. <laughs> genuinely, genuinely brilliant and important work. Now, our next award is for Best Sports Documentary, and this one is supported by Broadcast Sport. Let's take a look. Broadcast Support is here, and they are in fine voice. Brackets drunk. Let's take a look at the nominated films. Blood, Sweat and Cheer follows the disabled and non-disabled cheerleaders of Team Wales as they prepare for the World Cheerleading Championships in Florida. Five, six, seven, eight, one. Uh, we dip. Okay, okay, throw or so, just jump? Yeah, dip. Come off nice and straight and tidy. I am primarily a base. It's the tumblers that do the tumbling. I'm not going to be tumbling. I don't, I don't want my head. Uh, but under my wheelchair. So you want us to go down on the eight, 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 eight. five, six, seven, eight. Olympic gold medalist Samo Farah reveals the shocking truth about how he was trafficked to the UK in the real Mo Farah. We go through passport check and the lady going, yeah, don't forget Mohammed, Mohammed. I was like, yeah, Mohammed, Mohammed. Because that was on a document. Stamp. Looking back at a golden era of Nigerian football, Super Eagles 96 charts the journey of the Nigerian men's team to the 1996 Olympic Games in Atlanta. He was in touch with international leagues and our players abroad were brought back to play. Rashid Yikini was fast, long legs, he could score goals. Then I had Stephen Kessy, a big man, a big player and Yeyo Kocha, centre midfielder. Beautiful player, beautiful player. I spoke with him and I told him, I will train that team that we are not beaten. FIFA Uncovered exposes the corruption at the heart of international football. Being a member of FIFA is like being in a secret garden that you never want to leave. There's an unspoken code you could do whatever you want. You're a master of the sporting universe and more powerful in many cases than politicians and others because they come and go, but you stay in that job, you stay in that seat year after year. To present the award, please welcome to the stage broadcast sports Jake Bickerton. And joining them, it's actor and for those Ted Lasso fans, captain of AFC Richmond, Cola Bikini! <laughs> Good evening. Uh, this documentary stuck a chord with the jurors, who unanimously found it to be an inspiring, and vital piece of storytelling. The film stood out as being brave, moving, and often heartbreaking story with true revelations throughout. Jake, can you tell us what the award goes to? Grierson Award for the Best Sports Documentary, sponsored by Broadcast Sports, goes to The Real Mo Farah. Please welcome on stage director and producer Leo Burley, Sir Mo Farah, and members of the production team.
I'd heard of Mo before London 2012 Olympics, but it was there that I, and I think most of us probably really connected with him. You know, that extraordinary sporting occasion in which Mo was really the poster boy with his family, the Union Jack around him, on the track. That was, that was how I knew Mo. Uh, until uh, about two years ago, he invited me around to his house and he and Tanya sat me down and they told me his extraordinary story. And in that story, Mo told us that it was his ability as an athlete that helped him transcend the loss of his family, the loss of his name, the loss of his country. But there was someone else in, in the film that was, uh, was very important, and he's standing on this stage tonight. Alan Watkinson was Mo's PE teacher. Now, Alan is a very humble man, and he will tell you there's thousands of people like him in this country who give their time, often voluntarily, to nurture the talent, to give kids rules, structure, and hope. And that's what he did for Mo. And it's no exaggeration to say that without Alan Watkinson, Mo's story would have been very different. So I, with that, I'm going to hand over to Sir Mo Farah to say a few words. Oh, honestly. Um... As I said, um, I was a young little boy who was lost, um, didn't know many things, and you know, um, it wasn't easy for me, and I think no child should ever go through what I did, um, but you can't forget the people who supported you, and again tonight, if it wasn't from Alan Watkinson, who was my PE teacher at the time, who felt, I felt comfortable with him, to tell my story, then I wouldn't be here tonight, and I couldn't talk about my story, because often you're always scared as a victim because you don't know what's going to happen. And at that, at that point, it's, as I said, it, it's not easy. Um, but honestly, without the support I've had in my life, uh, particularly my wife, uh, Alan Watkinson, who, who is my PE teacher, and, and the people in my life, I, w I won't be here tonight. And honestly, I hope my story has given people a courage, a support, a platform, and somewhere we can talk about it because I think every human being deserves to be human and deserves to be right and deserves to be able to be who you are. And again, as a, as a victim myself, you never stop blaming yourself because that's what you do. Um, you think it often is you, you, but a lot of it, it's not just you, it's it's what's around you, who's around you. And, and I just want to thank um, BBC, uh, uh, Otomize uh, Studios, Red Bull Studios, to be able to tell my story in the details they did, to be able to connect with so many people around the world. And it, it wasn't an easy thing, as Leo knows, he's standing by me, three or four times I stopped, even though I'm four-time Olympic champion, I've won so many medals for my country. It wasn't an easy thing, and I stopped, I cried a little bit, I didn't show any tears to him. Um, but we managed to get on the other side um, with the support with so many people, particularly my wife, my kids, Alan Watkinson, who, who, stayed, who was one of my best mans at my wedding, that's how much we'll go back. Um, Zad, Hannah, and, and Red Bull Studios, and also can't forget Joe Livingston, she's here somewhere. I know you're sitting somewhere, Joe, with the support and, and, and getting through it. But without all these people, it wouldn't happen. I just want to say to uh, Grace and Award for this award tonight, thank you so much. It means so much to us and the people around now who are going through what I did right now as, as we speak. There's probably someone going through, but let's just, you know, give it. And I want to dedicate this award to my beautiful wife and Alan Watkinson. <laughs> Time now for the award for Best Documentary Presenter, sponsored this year by Disney Plus. So let's see them in action.
Emily Victoria confronts people from her past with some uncomfortable truths about how child sexual abuse is often overlooked in A Paedophile in My Family, Surviving Dad. Emily did not attend school today. There's just like so many red lines in year, year, year seven. And I think that perhaps I was more absent than I needed to be. Um, maybe, maybe there was a greater need for us to pick up on. What I'm finding difficult is the masking and smiling is what I needed to survive, but it's also the element that prevented people seeing the truth. In Racism for Sale, Renako Selina uses her knowledge of Chinese language and culture to track down and confront a producer of racist videos that have gone viral in China. Making Sense of Cancer with Hannah Fry sees the mathematician count the costs and benefits of cancer treatment in the UK, whilst she navigates her own battle with the disease. Thinking about the end, are you... Do you think that you've accepted what's going on? Yes and no. <laughs> but, yeah, right now, my heart does not see death. My heart does not see the end. Your my heart, heart sees those stories. My heart sees those stories of, of hope and I know I'm going to live. Comedian Munya Chihuahua had to flee Robert Mugabe's Zimbabwe as a child. In How to Survive a Dictator, he comes face to face with the relatives of the man who changed his life. Mugabe was a peacemaker. A peacemaker. Also, the guy told me I'm a fool for leaving. That is wild. Come back home. Mugabe is dead. Uh, if you're dead, we are running away from Mugabe. Mugabe is long gone, 2019. Let's see if uh, what you ran away from mm -hmm. eh, is there or it was imagined. You think it was imagined? I know, sir. The audacity! To present the award, please welcome from Disney Plus, Deborah Armstrong. And with her, it's wildlife presenter, Dan O'Neill. This award goes to a presenter who went above and beyond to add immense value and bring new insights into every aspect of this documentary. Clever and brave, the presenter was commended for their ability to shed new light on a complex subject and make it accessible. Deborah, please tell us who the award goes to. The Grayson Award for the Disney Plus Breast, uh, Bless, so sorry, Best <laughs> Documentary Presenter goes to Hannah Fry for Making Sense of Cancer with Hannah Fry. Please welcome Hannah to the stage. Thank you so much. I'm sorry. My team, my team, my team. Um, okay, um, normally I would come up and make a joke, but um, cancer isn't exactly ripe for material. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, thank you. Um, this, this film was really a massive team effort. Um, it was essentially made by three extraordinary women, <laughs> myself, Harriet and Charlie, um, and uh, spurred on by the very great Curious Films. Um, Charlie in particular, thank you for asking me what my pain was at one point. Um, but also, incredible support from Jack Bussell um, at the BBC, who uh, told me that this film holds the record now um, for the earliest F ever use of the F word post-watershed on BBC Two in the, history, <laughs> in the history of it. So, 
Um, yeah, and thank you to the team at Mirador, Miranda, Maddie, and Sophie Clay, all amazing. Thank you so much. How extraordinary. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> She's charismatic as hell, man. Another potential host for next year. <laughs> our next award is for the, I'm saying it, our next award is for the best constructed or formatted documentary series sponsored by Channel 4. Here is a reminder of the nominated series. Five teams race 16,000 kilometers across Canada in Race Across the World. With no smartphones, internet access, or credit cards, there's plenty of time for a chat. Talking about what we want in life and how much we wanted to start a family. But our issue has been that we've not been able to conceive. I just wanted to, to share with you, if I could. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Not that I don't have children, because I have six, but yeah. I'm adopted. Are you? I am. You're adopted? Uh, my mother and father could not have children. Wow. They adopted four of us. We always grew up knowing, but quite honestly, it was till I was about 11 or 12 till I even understood what adopted meant. Right. I thought I was just a special, cool kid, because my parents always told me I was more loved. So I always felt that love, and I always felt that I was theirs. Revealing the transformative power of professional wrestling, Monster Factory follows an intense training program for people striving to be the next big thing in the ring. For Gabby Ortiz, you can see the confidence that she's feeling. I am so much more capable than I thought I was. Like, I'm a bad... Gabby with a head of steam. A lot of momentum really quickly shifted here. I mean, I'm from Philly, so... An underdog is a hungry dog. Freddie Flintoff's Field of Dreams sees the sporting legend turn mentor as he takes on the challenge of setting up a cricket team from scratch with an unlikely bunch of teenagers. Let's be honest, this is not a big ask. The sweep in a dressing room. Look at him. This is going to be the club. This is where we're going to be playing. Yeah, the whole point of sports clubs and cricket clubs and that is everyone gets involved and chips in and does the bit. That's how places survive. These lads here, they've, they've embraced that. And they've got their heads down, haven't they? The others, you know, the behaviour-wise and their attitude stinks. Six up-and-coming artists battle it out to win 20 grand to further their music career in the rap game UK. Cultured, friends turned family, bros that are Asian. There's a fish and chip shop by the yard shop. In the ends, we blend in casually, but off ends, back to reality. Can't turn my back on reality, African blood, but British born. So which one am I? British if I win at sport, African when committing a crime, bruh. They're making a law just to suit what's good for their pocket. To present the award, please welcome television presenter and singer Scarlett Douglas. Good evening, everybody. Now, the winning series blew jurors away with its fun, utterly compelling approach to storytelling. Superb filming, lighting, graphics, and use of music serve to elevate the short, sharp, yet emotive episodes. The Grierson Award for the Channel 4 Best Constructed or Formatted Documentary Series goes to Monster Factory. Please welcome on stage executive producer and director Galen Summer and executive producer Max Heckman. Keep those applause going, come on. Wow, what, a, what an honor to, thank you so much, um, and to be in this room with all of you change makers, telling stories that are changing the world. And I would like to think that our series is also helping to change the world and perhaps even solve climate change, uh, <laughs> one wrestling match at a time. <laughs> but seriously, um, I, wanna, I wanna dedicate this award to Danny Cage, uh, the owner and the head coach at the Monster Factory. Um, 
who really is changing lives. And, and when I first met Danny, he told me that, you know, it wasn't as important to him that students went on to a great career in the WWE uh, or one of the other major wrestling promotions, but they even just learn life skills that can help them, you know, through, through life, through everyday life, um, not just in the ring. And, um, you know, that sounds like a nice thing to say, but I, Danny really believes that. Um, his, so Danny, we dedicate this to you, your dedication to your students, every one of them that walks through the door, whether they've paid the tuition fee or not, um, you know, he's there for them, helping to prepare them uh, for that great, big, you know, life-changing tryout, or even just if they need help getting through a, a mental health crisis. Um, and some of our students, you know, suffered from Tourette's or um, it, um, various struggles with mental health, and the Monster Factory is a refuge um, for people who, you know, need a place to be accepted, and they're not accepted elsewhere, and, and I think that was the beautiful thing that I learned um, about the, the professional wrestling community is it's, it's, it's not exactly what I thought. It's not just people that like to beat each other up and throw people around. Um, it truly is a welcoming place for people who don't fit elsewhere. And um, so I dedicate this to Danny Cage, to all the students at the Monster Factory who opened their doors to us. Um, it was such a privilege to be with you and to tell your story, and uh, thank you so much. I know I technically wasn't included in the gang, but it was a thrill to be referred to as a change maker for a second. <laughs> There's an art to making a film that can deliver so much in a short space of time. And these films have certainly done just that. Here are the nominations for best documentary short sponsored by Fullwell 73. Heart Valley witnesses a day in the life of Welsh hill farmer Wilf, a 73-year-old shepherd caring for his flock in a landscape he's inhabited his whole life. But he's a good farmer that he likes the job he's doing. For most people, it's from eight to five or something. They're just looking at say, what? When it's time to finish, I never looked about it. In The Score, the filmmaker's mother reacquaints herself with the piano she left in Sarajevo when she was forced to flee the city during the siege of 1992. Combining dance, poetry and first-hand testimony, black boy Joy Gone brings to life the stories of black men who share their struggles with their mental health. I remember looking in the mirror and hating what I saw. Who are you? Find the inner child. Help the boy who laughs hurt. Smashing stained glass tapestries, seeing all as threat and speak these words. I am whole. Lady of the Gobi follows a female long distance lorry driver on Mongolia's coal highway, a perilous strip leading from the mines to the Chinese border. In the early hours, the hospital was closed. The hospital was closed. The hospital was closed. The hospital to present the award, please welcome Fullwell 73's Ben Turner, along with documentary filmmaker and Strictly 2023 contestant Zara McDermott. <laughs> Good evening, 
everyone. The jury felt transported by the winning film, highlighting its sensitive portrayal of both the strength and fragility of the central character. The remarkable access and this film's visual flair left a lasting and powerful impression. Ben, please tell us who the winner is. The Grierson Award for the Full World 73 Best Documentary Short goes to Lady of the Gobi. Please welcome on stage the film's producer, Tessa Louise Salome, and line producer, Luke Sorrell. French, I'm gonna read, it's okay. okay. Um, so the film is in the account of a woman's incredible resilience as she confronts the peril of Mongolian toxic coal road. And it's also meant as a warning to open up your eyes to the urgent realities of globalization, ecological crisis, and human rights our world is facing. As you know, making a documentary takes a lot of time. And when we met The Guardian and NHK, they helped us to create this short film, which is the first reflection of the future lens version of a version that is on the way. <laughs> OK, I'm sorry. <laughs> um, it garnered more attention than we could ever dream. So. Here is a few words of our wonderful Mongolian director, Ogul. As humans, our retentive less pursuit of dreams inspire us. This is the essence of my film. Thank you, Maihu, for sharing our life and dreams. Finally, we want to thank you, our remarkable team, of course, and the partner, and in particular, of course, the guardians and also the Sundance Institute, Catapult, for their support. It's been a very complicated film to do. It's uh, 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 in the desert, and it's uh, very hard to get there, and it's, uh, uh, it's been a hard um, a journey for the director. And uh, of course, we're really happy, and uh, we want to thank the Grierson Committee for giving us this award. So, thanks. Thank you. And so we come to the Grierson Hero of the Year, sponsored by Sky Documentaries. Now, this award honours people who have made a positive and meaningful impact within the documentary industry. Now, to tell us more, please welcome one of Britain's leading screenwriters, Jack Thorne! <laughs> Leadership is a word used a lot, but I think rarely understood. It is a word that's gifted more than it's earned. We ascribe it easily to those that don't deserve it. Deaf and Disabled People in TV is an organisation that truly leads. Kaz, Bryony and Charlie are leaders, and that's why this award is beautiful, and that's why this award matters. I believe that it is the first time that it's been given to a group rather than an individual. And I tell you what, nothing explains better how, how DTP, DTP TV work than that fact. It is made up of over 2,000 deaf, disabled, and neurodivergent people. And I know for Kaz, Bryony, and Charlie, it's important that this award is shared with all 2,000. And that's what I love about them. Whether it's in the events they create, the online forums they curate, or the advocacy they all pursue, what they do is they make safe spaces for people to talk, 
for people to climb into the industry and for people to feel protected. Charlie, in an interview he, he gave recently, um, talked about a new demand uh, for deaf and disabled talent at the moment and having calls saying, uh, we really need a visually impaired sound recordist and having to say to people, there aren't that many because you haven't been looking after them for the last 10, 15, 20 years. DTPV, DTP TV, oh my God, sorry. <laughs> I told them I'd do this, it's an awful name. Uh, 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 <laughs> uh, DTP TV exists to demand industry changes so that this talent is never lost again. It is an industry leader and is mighty. Uh, 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 but as well as being a group, I do want to talk about them individually. Everyone that knows Kaz will know that look of outrage in her eyes and, and cower as her hands rise, knowing that you're going to get a bollocking. <laughs> she doesn't care if you're a prince or a pauper. Her fury is democratic, generally proportionate, generally Kaz, uh, and powerful. She fights for what is right constantly. She is wonderful. She is a maker of beautiful documentaries and television. If you didn't see um, Joe and John Bishop, Life After Death, she should, you should. Uh, and she is new in post as a BBC commissioner. Charlie works across the world in, in 40 plus countries as an, exec, as an unscripted executive casting producer. It is a world I don't understand, um, uh, but he is killing it. And as someone uh, like me with a hidden disability, he has constantly made people aware, both in and out of DTP, DTP TV. <laughs> <laughs> he has constantly made people sit up and take notice. Bryony, I've had the good fortune to work with as, as both a producer and an advocate. She's just brilliant. On then Barbara McAllen, uh, a drama, I'm afraid, I'm so sorry. Um, uh, she led from the front. Um, because of her, the production truly embodied uh, the social model of disability. And as one of the people at the core of the TV Access Project, TAP, she took control of the studio's brief and has made great change happen. I want to leave the last word to someone anonymous, someone protected by the, by the great arms of, of DTP TV. Um, this was posted. <laughs> this was posted last Thursday, um, just to people on their Facebook forum, and, and they were kind enough to let me quote it tonight. Whatever happens with my career in TV, I need to stop framing a possible change as a failure. You, the late life diagnosed, neurodivergent, dyscalculia, uh, job hopping girl, the, the queer girl constantly reliving trauma, battling depression and debilitating anxiety, the addict, the alcoholic, the one whose family assumes she'd go nowhere, the one with an abusive past who didn't think she'd survive past 30, the, the girl who couldn't see a day into the future, let alone a decade. You did that. You found a way to get to work in an industry that's notoriously hard to break into. Not only that, you found your niche and you thrived. You made a difference, I promise. You contributed something. I'm proud of you and I'm proud of us. You haven't failed. This is what DTTB, oh. this is what, this is, I'm gonna make them say it. Uh, this is what DTTV is. A, a group of people uh, battling change, making change and doing it with grace and wonder. It's about survival, it's about thriving, it's about making our TV better, it's about telling authentic stories, celebrating difference, leading change, and telling people again and again that disabled voices matter. I'm so proud to be giving this award this evening. Please give it up for your heroes and mine, Bryony, Kaz, Charlie, and the wonderful TV. How do you follow an award-winning writer? <laughs> um, thank you, more than anything. Thank you to the Grierson Trust and to the people who nominated us for this incredibly prestigious award. We'd also like to thank, big, big thank you to Jack Thorne. He's an incredible champion, role model for the entire deaf, disabled and neurodivergent community. But most importantly, we want to acknowledge and thank the talented and creative members of DTP TV. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
It's taken me three years to say that. <laughs> um, deaf and disabled people in TV. They are the heart of our community. They campaign with us, provide support and encouragement to their peers. And on top of this, they also make bloody amazing content. But being a disabled person in this industry is really tough. It can be lonely, soul-destroying, exhausting, and at times scary. Should you disclose, and if you do, will you lose your job? What happens if the disabled toilet or the lift breaks? Will people respect your access requirements? I mean, will even the team drinks be accessible? And if you speak up about the barriers that you face, will it lead to your contract not being renewed and you're given a reputation for being difficult? These are just some... These are just some of the considerations that people like us need to think about on top of doing our day-to-day -day jobs, and it really shouldn't be this hard. We are important. You need us. In a world where TV is made to fit a certain mould, we offer a whole new mindset and way of working. The diversity of our lived experiences, our voices, our thoughts and opinions unlock new ideas, new formats, new concepts and new talent. By making programmes inclusive and representative both on and off screen, we're shaping a kinder society where people feel seen, heard and valued. When you leave here today, leave with a commitment to read up on the TV Access Project. It's an incredible initiative that has the support of 10 of the UK's biggest broadcasters and streamers, working towards full inclusion by 2030. Everything you need to be an ally is available here, and the Grierson Trust will be sending out info in their next newsletter. But please do look it up. Sorry, I'm, I'm completely dazzled by this outfit and I have to borrow it at the end of the night, I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> okay, so don't allow... I'm terrible at this. I'm a dyslexic person. The idea of reading my own notes is absolutely terrible. So um, don't allow uh, excuses to stop you from hiring deaf and disabled people. Um, I've got to say as well, I want to thank our, uh, the broadcasters, the networks, the indies that have been working with us throughout the last three, four, how many years it's been. And again, the support from our members. I'm gonna finish up, one minute. Oh, actually, no, we were gonna actually throw this out there, which was to anyone that's booking or hiring venues at the moment for Christmas parties, for fuck's sake, make sure they're accessible. That has been a <laughs> dazzle, dazzle. You'd be surprised the number of them that aren't, or, you know, they've got a disabled toilet, but it's just full of supplies. Um, so please do make sure... Oh, I've lost my notes. That's always helpful. Um, OK, so I think I will shut up now. Um, I just want to thank Jack and, of course, the awards for this amazing, very heavy thing. Um, and we wish all of you a good night and enjoy the rest of the evening. Amazing. Onwards now to our best entertaining documentary, sponsored by Prime Video. Let's have a reminder of the four films that most entertained this year's jury. A bunch of amateurs follows the enthusiasts of the Bradford movie makers as they try to save their crumbling cinema from decay. 2015 Best Sound for Paranormal Joe and Phil and Best Visual Effects for Haunted Turnip. Hello, darling. Th this is the one that I'm proud of, Best Cinematography. That's when I was striving for.
Trainwreck Woodstock 99 is an uncompromising assessment of the music festival that went disastrously wrong. There were people hanging from the speaker towers. It was like, like, Planet of the Apes. Once you become part of a herd, you become like animals. And all of these people were acting like animals. In Life After Death, John and Joe Bishop come to terms with Joe's hearing loss by learning sign language together and trying to see the funny side of father-son dynamics. My son's deaf, and I've never found a way of talking about it off stage very often, but even on stage, I've never found anything to say. It was hard, because he lost his hearing when he was a teenager, when he was 15, 16 which is a very difficult time anyway to be a parent because, oh, you know, your kids just fucking ignore you anyway. <laughs> when a Pepsi commercial offers up military hardware for their best customers, one young man takes them very, very seriously in Pepsi, Where's My Jet? Through my math and my research, I'm trying to figure out how much a Harrier jet costs. My immediate thought was, you could probably get 7 million Pepsi points for a whole lot less. I really saw this as an opportunity, a legitimate opportunity to change my world. My mind couldn't stop racing to try to figure out how to make this happen. To present the award, please welcome Prime Video's Haji Chukka and English professional footballer, Troy Deeney. Um, before we start, just to say you are doing a brilliant job, Nish. Excellent job. From one curly-haired brown man to another <laughs> lovely man. <laughs> and it's also quite nice to see three non-white men presenting the award. If that isn't progress, I don't know what is. You wouldn't get this at the BAFTAs. <laughs> Your turn. <laughs> Thanks for that, mate. <laughs> um, <laughs> the jury has commended this documentary for being innovative and clever a particularly strong creative vision. It was engaging, compelling, and ultimately, wildly entertaining. Oh, yeah, do you want to carry yeah. on your monologue, or do you want to Why not? Shall we? Yeah, let them uh, I want to just present it together. <laughs> um, so the Grierson Award for the Amazon Prime Video Best Entertaining Documentary goes to Pepsi, Where's My Jet? Please welcome on stage producer Andrew Coyne and executive producer Theo James. Wow. I, I should have probably picked someone less attractive to be up here with me, but <laughs> this is, uh, when Theo and I found this story, we knew we had something really special. And there's a lot of people that allowed us to be up here today. Renzi, Nick, Vivian, Wyatt, Jeremiah, uh, 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 Rosie, uh, everyone else who helped us make this. And then thank you for Netflix, Cam Jamila, Coleman, Adam, Ted, for believing in a story that not only is fun and took us back to the 90s, but hopefully encourages everyone out there, for all the Davids in the world, to take on your Goliaths. Uh, we feel very honored to be here amongst amazing filmmakers doing incredibly important work uh, about the human condition, about everything that's important in life. But we decided to do a documentary about uh, you know, fizzy drinks. So we, we feel slightly embarrassed in that sense, but thank you so much, and thank you for everyone else here. It, it's, it's an incredible opportunity, thank you. Thank you. I am doing a great job of reading out loud and then standing over there and looking quite creepy. Okay. <laughs> Staying in the world of entertainment, we move on to music. Let's have a look at the nominations for this year's Best Music Documentary. Let's dance. Whoa. 
Put on your red shoes and dance the blues. Moon Age Daydream explores David Bowie's creative, musical, and mystical journey. My strivings to have some kind of spiritual base were really, really strong all my life. And I think I tried to amalgamate my own bedrock of spirituality. I mean, I was a Buddhist on Tuesday, and I was into Nietzsche by Friday. Fight the Power, How Hip-Hop Changed the World is a deep dive into the genre that exploded onto the music scene and shifted the cultural landscape. Spike says, yo, I'm coming up with a movie talking about this situation in New York, man, this BS going down. Yo, man, I need an anthem. Playback. Nothing Compares tells the story of Sinead O'Connor's extraordinary rise to fame in the words of the artist herself. In one way, I loved it. Obviously, I was a very young woman, and you kind of fantasize about being famous. In another way, I was frightened by it. What maybe was difficult for me was the timing of the success thing. It meant that I suddenly had this identity, um, and it, it, I didn't feel like it was really me. To be honest, I, I also had very little self-esteem. I couldn't understand why anyone liked my records. Little Richard, I Am Everything celebrates the legacy of a true icon and musical innovator. Little Richard was the first thing I remember, like, as far as rock and roll was concerned. One time, Elvis came backstage, and Elvis said, well, Richard, don't you ever worry about anything. You will always be the true king of rock and roll. To present this award, please welcome All Saints singer and star of the recent celebrity race across the world, Melanie Blatt! <laughs> Good evening. Excuse me, I'm a bit blind. So, Jurors called the winning film an audiovisual treat made with pure love, a film that felt like an art installation. It created a new language for cinema and the documentary genre. Jurors said it was filmmaking to aspire to. The Grierson Award for the best music documentary goes to Moon Age Daydream. Please welcome on stage the film's director, producer, and editor, Brett Morgan. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, I would like to thank everyone who bought a ticket to see Moon Age Daydream in a movie theater. And thank you. And everyone who bought a ticket to see any documentary in a movie theater this year. Uh, a lot of people have questioned whether there's theatrical documentaries or documentaries for streaming and if there's a difference. And there is a difference. Uh, I, I spend, my team and I spend a, a tremendous amount of time on sound um, and building this film for cinemas. Um, it, it's not a film about facts and information, it's a film that was designed to be experienced in a com communal collective setting. And I want to thank Universal Pictures for supporting this film around the world and treating it like a, a regular movie. Um, it was really during the pandemic when the film was being constructed, uh, really wasn't sure where this thing would land. Um, uh, the film, if you've seen it, is uh, in many ways a love story. Um, we see David go through life um, putting himself sort of in the fire to create his art until he arrives at a place in life 
where he's able to create art from the safety and the confines of his loving relationship with Amon. So uh, I would like to uh, dedicate this award to my partner, and really I think I speak on behalf of all of us who are in this room tonight, uh, because there's nobody who works in film who does it alone. Uh, our partners, sac their sacrifice, I mean, this is one of the most indulgent uh, uh, forms. I mean, it really is, I mean, especially Moon Age was seven years just sort of playing around with this media, and uh, my wife, Deborah Eisenstadt, uh, really was the one who had to sacrifice tremendously for our family. And so on behalf of uh, me and everyone else here, I'd like to thank our, our partners for supporting us and allowing us to live out our dreams. Thank you very much. And thank you, David. If you think uh, making documentaries is indulgent, may I introduce you to stand-up comedy? <laughs> Also, I bought a ticket for that movie, and I loved it. So you're welcome, Brett. <laughs> the BBC Grierson's Trust Award is always a highlight of the evening, where we celebrate someone truly special. And this year is no exception. To tell us more about this year's recipient, please welcome the president of Murray Edwards College at the University of Cambridge and the former head of news and current affairs at Channel 4, Dorothy Byrne. <laughs> Well, it's nice to be away from academia. <laughs> this year's recipient of the Grierson Trustees Award is a magnificent filmmaker, a daring journalist, and a champion of women's rights at work. She has been in the forefront of exposing on television some of the most challenging social issues in our country particularly those concerning children and women. Broadcaster of one of her early films into gang grooming was delayed until after local elections because its subject matter was so controversial. That very difficult subject area of grooming and the way our policing and justice systems are letting down young girls is one she has returned to again and again, never relenting in her search for the truth despite the unfair attacks unleashed on her. She has also been in the forefront of changing police and social attitudes towards girls who have been groomed, promoting their rights when they were despised and when their suffering was dismissed. Her work has helped to transform the attitudes of the courts towards victims of grooming when they give evidence. Anna Hall is a brave woman. And when you see her name attached to a film, you know you have to watch it because it will be what everyone's talking about tomorrow. Compassion and respect for the subjects of her films are her hallmarks. But Anna is also a pioneer in changing attitudes to how we as filmmakers work and live our lives. Since the television industry began, working day and night, never seeing our families, feeling ill and stressed, have been accepted as going with the territory. Women who rightly felt they could not combine this awful way of life with their family lives simply dropped out. And this has probably been the greatest cause of the male dominance in television journalism. Anna is showing that there's another way. She has set up her company, Candor, with a different set of values, working with her teams to ensure they can make great films and have a family life. What she is doing has the potential 
to transform our industry. Anna, I salute you. You are a force for good, and it's not just me who thinks so. Let's take a look at this film. I actually didn't cry when, when I was told that Emily had been killed. I mean, you, you, you can never imagine being told that your five-year-old daughter has been murdered. Anna, as a filmmaker, is one of the most compassionate, thoughtful, clever and caring people in the industry. She's the sort of person that if I were to have a film made about a member of my family, I would want Anna to make it. Two mothers are searching for their daughters on the moors above Keithley. They know the men and their cars. What did eh? you do with her then? Rape. What did you do with her? I had sex with her. So you had sex with her? Listen to Tell this. me about this then. Listen to this, yeah? The tape is now about to finish and you have just changed your story completely. And if he doesn't take no for an answer, that approach has enabled the awareness of many causes that would go unheard were it not for her tenacity and determination. I think what she manages to get so right is the tone always feels so spot on. And I think she is brilliant at making sure that the contributors are really given the platform and they're really looked after and you hear their voice. He picked up the speaker above his head and was going to throw it on my head. When I screamed at him, please stop, you're going to kill me, he said, I don't care. I first met Anna and we made 100 Britain Sex Gangs together. Not long after we finished that film, she suggested that we might set up a production company in her hometown of Leeds. And her vision for the company was that it would be family friendly, that it would welcome women filmmakers, champion women filmmakers, though men are welcome too. In the streets, villages, and countryside of Yorkshire. Hi! There's a small team of dedicated midwives. She's really on the move, look at her! Anna's been a real trailblazer in British television. She's really cared about her team, about her contributors. She's cared about duty of care throughout the whole process and she's brought new voices to British television. There are countless factors that can lead to your death. Anna is a role model for for filmmaking, for kind of ethical, compassionate, brilliant filmmaking. The soul singer Bill Withers has died at the age of 81. Feel me when you're not strong. I'll be your friend. I hope you carry on. I'm so thrilled that you're getting this award this year. You've been a brilliant colleague. I've loved working with you. Your absence of ego probably means you don't think you deserve this, but you absolutely do. Congratulations, Anna. Welcome to the stage, the recipient of this year's BBC Grierson Trustees Award, Anna Hall. Um, well, when Lorraine rang me to tell me that I'd been awarded this, I was driving at the time, and I nearly crashed the car. I kept saying, you're kidding, and she kept laughing and saying, no, I'm not kidding, Anna, I'm not kidding. This is, without doubt, the biggest honour of my life, and thank you so, so much to the Grace and Trustees for thinking of me and my work. When I started out, I didn't really know what I was doing. I hadn't been to film school or journalism school. I found myself in my late 20s sitting in front of all the families in Dunblane who'd lost their children, doing those interviews, listening to them. I grew up in the town and my cousin knew some of the families and I met them and they decided to work with us and that was the first film I got commissioned at ITV. The film went out to a live audience of 6.6 .6 million it was nominated for numerous awards, including an Emmy, 
And uh, you could say my career has been pretty much downhill since then. <laughs> um, I went on to make Borrow Baby for Dorothy, and that was the first film that I directed. It was Dorothy's idea, and she, she, she rang us and said, let's find out what it was like for uh, teenagers to look after babies, and we were looking at the epidemic in teenage pregnancy. And um, we had to work out how to rig those houses way before rigs were a thing. But on that shoot, I found out I was pregnant. And I subsequently found out I was having twins. And in the most fabulous piece of family planning, I had a, babe, a third baby a year and five days later. <laughs> and I carried on working. And at that time, I didn't know any female PDs. I certainly didn't know any female PDs with children. I didn't know any female execs. And the only female commissioning editor I knew was Dorothy. And to me, at that time, she was utterly terrifying. Yeah. Um, I, did, I made the radical decision of not moving to London. And I decided to stay put in Leeds and keep stability for my kids. But I was in a bit of a wilderness. There were no schemes. There was no mentoring. There were no courses for women to become shooters. There was no networking. And somehow, I kept going. And I have to say, the biggest privilege of my life is still to walk into someone's front room or kitchen, sit down with them, have a cup of tea, and listen. And I think the most important part of filmmaking is listening. I've drunk a lot of tea. I've sat in a lot of kitchens and front rooms. But I'm lucky because I love every bit of the process, from setting up a film to editing and to filming and editing. And I never take for granted how incredible it is to sit down and for somebody to tell me their story. Um, I hope that all my films come from a place where I truly care. And I'm often enraged. And I'm really sorry if you're a commissioning editor and I've come into your office or your pod and I've ranted at you. But I get this feeling in my stomach where I'm mad about something and everyone in my office groans. And then I try and work out what we can do about it. But I've never lost the belief that by making a film, I can change one person's mind about something. And I always say to my team, we just need to reach one, people, one person with this film. My mantra for years has been an Albert Einstein quote, it's easier to break the atom than destroy prejudice. And I know that that's what we've done in our work. We have reached people in their front rooms. My friend, the police officer, who rang me to say that a woman she'd been called out to see week after week, always black and blue, had seen behind closed doors and decided that the police could finally press charges. She wasn't scared of her partner anymore. The hundreds of people who were commenting online that the experience of Kath in the family secret was their experience. It broke my heart to see those comments. They said that they too had been raped by their sibling but they kept their family secret for 45 years, and they were only just telling the truth that night. And they said thank you that somebody was finally lifting the lid. And we've helped to create change, from the president of the family court's office ringing us the day after our film Torn Apart went out to ask if we could send all our research, and a few months later published that the family courts should be more transparent, which is what we were calling for. So I've been enabled to lift the lid again and again because of so many people who've helped me. Commissioners in this room who have believed in what I wanted to do. Brilliant editors and execs who've helped to shape my work. And so many people over the years who've encouraged me to keep, to keep going and not chuck it, chuck it all in and go and get a proper job. <laughs> but you know, it wasn't until I won the RTS Journalism Award for the Hunt for Britain Sex Gangs in 2013 and I won the Women in Film and Television Award the same year that I actually thought I could do my job. And by then, I was 17 years in. And I know that that's completely ridiculous, but what I realized was that I had desperately needed in the early stages of my career were mentors. And I realized that I really needed to champion other female directors and let other women know that having a baby while working in telly is not the worst thing that can happen to you. It's the best thing, but you just need people around you to give you flexibility to make it work. So I wanted to set up a company where people didn't have to hide who they were, 
where we can champion each other's quirks and where our staff know that we put them first. And at Canda, we've created some really simple values that are integral to what we do for our contributors and our staff. They are treating people with compassion, telling the truth, behaving with integrity, and working with the spirit of kindness. And in this industry where we've consistently turned a blind eye, where scandal after scandal still comes out, where a, female produ where a production team cannot have female members of staff working on it because of a male presenter, that is outrageous. And we should not be allowing... We should not be allowing that to happen. And I want to hold on to creating a company where we say, no, we are not operating like that. And in the time I've got left, I want to continue to champion people who should be making telly. Because if we're going to be truly inclusive, we have to be intentional about making that inclusi inclusivity happen, not be tokenistic. I think if we had a pot where production companies can apply and be funded to take six months placements, then the situation on the ground to increase diversity would change really quickly. Perhaps we should think about how we can make that happen. For me, filmmaking is a totally collaborative process, and I'm so grateful for all the people around me, to the many, many commissioning editors in this room who've commissioned me, to Brian and Jez at True Vision for giving me a home that I so desperately needed and helping me to start my Canda vision, to everyone at Canda who brings enthusiasm and dedication to our work, to Julie Hesselgrove, who's with me tonight, who is our MD at Canda. And she is the ying to my yang, and she makes sure the whole company runs smoothly. And finally, I want to say a massive thank you to my very incredibly long-suffering family. My husband, Simon, who's here with me tonight, has always supported me and said, yes, you should do it, even if it was a crazy idea. And my three children, who are now young adults, Johnny, Rachel, and Maya. Like every working mum... Like every working mum in this country for a long time, I was fearful that I'd let them down. But from the toddlers running around when I made Edge of the City to the young adults that they are now, they have grounded me and kept me sane. And I'd also just like to say thank you to my mum and my sister and my brother who are watching this at home. My mum is 92. She's very weak and she is close to the end, but she wanted me to come tonight. So thank you to the trustees for this incredible honour and I would like to dedicate this award to my mum and dad, my dad's no longer here, to my husband Simon and my three beautiful children. Thank you. Incredible stuff. And now for the best individual film telling a UK story. Here are the nominations for the best single documentary domestic award sponsored by Envy. A paedophile in my family, surviving dad, examines the complex emotional scars of a childhood of sexual abuse. I used to feel really guilty, like I was taking, never feel guilty taking your anything. husband away from you. Um, and, and I think like that, that shame. You've got nothing to be ashamed of. You should never feel guilty. That's what he did to him. 
to us. Never ever. <laughs> A behind the scenes look at the musician as he sets out to write that challenging second album. Louis Capaldi, How I'm Feeling Now, provides an insight into the mental and physical impact of creating under pressure. I'm not confident in my abilities as a songwriter. And I think that's got worse the more successful I've got. Someone you loved was really fucking big. That was that. If you want to talk about turning points, that's a fucking turning point. Lyra is a heartfelt tribute to inspiring young journalist Lyra McKee, who was shot dead by an IRA bullet. My passion in life is for investigative journalism, but I came into the industry at a time when there didn't seem to be any places left for people like me, someone who wanted to go off and chase a story for months and ask questions and find answers and try and find out what was really going on beneath the surface. I really need your help. I need more time to keep asking questions. A profoundly deaf Kurdish boy finds his voice and his place in the world in Name Me Lawand. Send the award. Please welcome Envy's Natasha Cadle, and with her, it's documentary filmmaker Stacey Dooley. Hello, all right. Uh, delighted to be here. It's my first night out post baby. In case my tits start leaking. Um, okay. As one of this year's jurors, I am highbrow, really, uh, I can tell you we were blown away with all four finalists. The winning documentary had the jury hooked with its heartfelt portrait of a very compelling character. We found the film to be poignant, moving, and utterly creative. Natasha, please tell us who the award goes to. Thank you. The Grierson Award for the Envy Best Single Documentary Domestic goes to Lyra. Yay! I didn't actually, um, I'm the executive producer of the film, but I didn't actually know I was going to be up here um, <laughs> until this morning when Alison Miller, the director, um, phoned me from Dublin Airport telling me that she was on her way to Chicago to, um, to show the film to a bunch of journalism students that she'd got a last minute invite to. So that, I think, tells you all you need to know about Alison Miller right there. <laughs> Um, the award is obviously for the whole team, um, including Sam and Orla and Jackie and our brilliant editor, Chloe Lamborn, um, who, also who also can't be here, um, and uh, to Channel 4 for, for backing the film um, from the beginning. But really, um, the award is for two people, for Alison, the director, and of course, for our beloved Lyra. Um, I would... Um, very much like Anna, who's just been here, and indeed they are sisters in documentary making. Um, I would really like to pay tribute to Ali's incredible talent 
and um, compassion and humanity um, in every film that she has made, but never more so than in this one. And this one was really personal. Um, Ali was Lyra's mentor and very close friend. So to sit every day in an edit suite, looking at somebody that you loved who'd been murdered, I just, you know, it takes my breath away. The courage that she had to do that. Um, and so this is very much for Ali. Um, if you haven't seen the film, please do. It is on Channel 4, All 4, Channel 4, All 4, whatever it's called at the minute. Um, it, please watch it. You know, our ambition with making the film was for Lyra's voice to continue traveling. She was a really special person. She was on the cusp of great things when her life was cruelly taken away from her. Um, you will fall in love with her. Please watch it and share it with other people who will also fall in love with her and keep Lyra's voice traveling. Um, out in the world. Ali um, wanted me to end with a quote from Lyra. Lyra um, was a working class, uh, a queer 18 year old when she started from a very difficult part of Belfast when she started to try and get into the media and into uh, journalism. And she, had to, she didn't have any connections. She didn't have any network, and she elbowed her way in there and was really about to be on the cusp of huge things. So this is um, a quote from Lyra, and I would say this is especially probably for the doc lab people and first-time directors and student directors who are in the audience. And it says, do not fucking listen to the bullshitters and the naysayers. If you want to do it, go and do it. And don't let anyone tell you that you can't. Thank you. And now on to the international documentaries. This award is sponsored by HBO Documentary Films. So let's have a brief reminder of the year's nominated films. Werner Herzog examines an extraordinary archive of close-up footage of volcanoes in The Fire Within, Requiem for Katya and Maurice Kraft. When looking at Maurice right at the eruption, it seems that this is more than just a volcanic event. A fire within has taken hold of him. And it is certainly the same with Katya. She clearly expressed it in an interview. I cannot live without volcanoes. All That Breathes explores the connections between humans and animals in Delhi as the city expands and air pollution rises. A house made of splinters follows the day-to-day -day workings of an orphanage in eastern Ukraine, caring for children whose homes have been shattered by poverty, violence and alcohol. Mama, what are you doing? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Escape from Kabul Airport is the inside story of the largest airlift in modern history marking the end of America's 20-year war in Afghanistan. It blew my mind, you know, they, they told us, you know, the, they're gonna help us with crowd control, and we're like, what do you mean? What do you mean we're working with the Taliban? Like, I couldn't believe it. To present the award, 
please welcome, hot from his latest newscast, it's Adam Fleming. Hi, thanks everyone. Um, the jury felt this was filmmaking at its most confident. Cinematic, yet intimate. Profound, yet unflinching. The film demonstrated a lightness of touch, but packed a powerful visual punch as well. The Grierson Award for the best single documentary, International, sponsored by HBO Documentary Films, goes to All That Breathes. Please welcome on stage producer Flory Priest and members of the production team. I'm sure if our director, Sean Eck, was here, he'd say something very profound uh, and articulate right now, but sadly you've got me. Um, so all I can say is uh, thank you again so much for this. It's just incredible to have uh, this honor and this recognition for this documentary. I did forget to thank some people um, last time. Um, so <laughs> are incredible um, contributors in this story. So Nadim, Saud, and Salik, whose work at Wildlife Rescue made this film possible, and the incredible work they do every day is still such an inspiration to all of us. Um, and also uh, Dogwiff, who <laughs> I forgot to thank last time, and I'm sure Ollie Harbottle is in the room somewhere, so thank you. Um, yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> And that brings us to the final award of the evening. It's for Best Documentary Series, and it's sponsored by Netflix. Let's see our final four nominations. Delving into the dark underbelly of a city, Dublin Narcos recounts how drugs changed the very fabric of Ireland's capital. Jesus Christ, if I could feel like this every day, I could take on the world. It was very empowering. I thought I could actually live with this stuff, like, very well. You know, I thought I'd discovered something that was, like, I'm not gonna get addicted to this shit. I feel more productive, I have more energy. Libby, Are You Home Yet? is an in-depth investigation into the search for student Libby Squire, who went missing walking home from a club in her university city of Hull in 2019. We were driving up and I felt sick the whole time. And I think the closer we got to Hull, the realization was that this was really serious because it had been another hour. Parole goes behind bars to examine the high stakes world of parole board hearings, a place where futures are decided. With the consequences of what happened to me, ending up back in prison, it's the biggest regret of my life. I've been away a long time. My whole goal is to get out again, find work, find myself a place, get my dog, and that is it. Using first-hand testimony from all sides of the conflict, Once Upon a Time in Northern Ireland charts the escalation of the Troubles. I was 18. I was pregnant and then we decided to get married. I didn't really know what else to, to expect. I knew I was going to be a mother. Now, when we got married, I knew he was in the IRA, but I'd say to him, no, I don't want you in the IRA because I don't want to be left sitting as a prisoner's wife. And he said, OK, then I'll give it up. But he didn't. He didn't. To present the award, please welcome journalist and filmmaker Moby Nazar. We've made it, friends and peers. I'm really, really pleased to be here. So, jurors appreciated the honest and expansive storytelling 
which resulted in a remarkable documentary with reach and impact. This timely series resonated with audiences. The jurors described it as a monument to documentary making. So the Grierson Award for the Netflix Best Documentary Series goes to, I think this is such a brilliant winner, it's Once Upon a Time in Northern Ireland. Please welcome on stage James Blumel and other members of the production team. Thank you so much. Uh, look, look. Um, didn't prepare for the second one. The, 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 I, think, I, think, I think making a documentary like this it, it is collaborative. It's been said a lot tonight. And this is the team, and they're, they're, they were incredible. And, and, and so, on behalf of all of us, thank you. And that's it. Well done, everybody. That wraps up the 51st Grierson Awards. Congratulations to all of tonight's nominees. Give yourselves a massive round of applause. And to, of course, all of the award recipients. Thanks also to our sponsors and partners whose support is vital to the work done by the Grierson Trust for the present and future of filmmaking. Thank you very much for having me. You've all done very great things. Good night. Let's hear from You gotta see this. Times that I've seen you lose your way, you're not in control, and you won't be told. All I can do to keep you safe is hold you close, hold you close till you can breathe on your.
used to these tricks being filmmakers. <laughs> <laughs> 